It's your buddy Ronnie here, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, Ronnie's back, and he's trying to sell me some more crap that's just gonna end up in a landfill because he screwed me over last time. Well, guess what? That's not the case. I'm here to help you now. This time, I'm looking out for your financial future. And that's why I think you need to invest in precious metals. Not that gold and silver garbage. I'm talking about the real precious metals. Vintage lawn tractors and vintage lawn tractor parts, baby. That's where the money's at. Back in 1969, I knew a guy who knew a guy who, who knew a guy and he put $500 in cash in a glove in a shed car. Then he pulled it out in 2023 and guess what? It was still just $500 in cash in a glove. But if you would have put this 1969 10XL in a shed, then pulled it out in 2023, guess what? You'd have a whole lot of money. That's why it's important to think long term and invest your money into these precious metals. Because you don't want to get caught with your pants down when the market all of a sudden takes a crap on you. You don't want to get caught with your pants down anyway. Trust me, I've been there. It's not fun. Take this Briggs muffler, for instance. Back in 1977, this thing listed for $5.50. Flash forward to today's market prices, and it's worth three times that. By my math, that's like a huge increase. I've always believed that a physical piece of equipment stored in a secure dry shed is the best wealth insurance I could have. And if you show me where your shed is, I can check in on your investment and make sure it's secure too. That way, you can sleep easy at night knowing Ronnie's keeping a close personal eye on your investment regardless of the stock market, big banks, or even the real estate market. With the way today's lawnmowers are turning into all plastic crap, you'd be dumb not to invest your money in these vintage lawn tractors. That's why you should get in contact with Ronnie's Mower Reserve and I'll send you a brochure on how to get started. Now the brochure isn't free, you're gonna have to cover a small shipping charge of $20. But that's worth it, knowing you're going to be resting in great hands with your pal Ronnie. So don't mess around with your money and give Ronnie's Mower Reserve a call today. And I'll get you set up investing in these vintage mowers. You got one shot. Don't blow it. Pterodactyl here. Today's video is going to be on this. This Stilch Extended shaft hedge trimmer that was found in the dumpster. Somebody threw this away. Now I don't know what model it is because that's all wore off, but I don't care what model it is. Let's see if we can fix it. Okay, so it looks like it's in pretty rough shape. So the first thing we're gonna do is see if it'll run and die. and that's not the correct air cleaner for it. And this purge bulb, that's all cracked and broken. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just spray a little starting fluid in there and I'll do that right through this hole in the center because that'll go right into the carburetor. And then we'll see if it'll, if it'll lick off. So I ran and died. So you know what that means. It's a fuel problem. Now, just from the way it sounded just now, this is a four mix engine. So it's got valves in it. And if you don't know what a four mix is, it's a four stroke engine that uses two cycle fuel, dinosaur syrup, dinosaur juice mix, two cycle mix, to get its lubrication. It doesn't have a separate crankcase even though it's a four-stroke engine. It's got valves and stuff. 
and still recommends you use that four mix oil because it's got added uh, lubricant properties in it to help lube these four mix motors. So if you got that four mix stuff, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna use that four mix oil that they make. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull this little air. air box off so we can get at the carburetor. It probably just needs a carburetor kit. And an air filter and a new purge bulb. Everything else looks like it's in decent shape. Boy, that thing is really on there. There we go. Just popped off. The fuel lines, they don't look all that bad. I'll pop them off here. Oh yeah, it's yeah, it's splitting on me. Yeah, that fuel line's bad. All right, now let me undo the uh, throttle cable over here. I think I got it latched on high. Yeah. Push that down, and that releases that. I got the fuel lines released, and there's our carburetor. And then these fuel hoses, they just look like they're just some fuel line that just pushed down to there. So that was the short one. And then this was the long one here. And I'll take a peek inside the tank. And there's just hoses on the other end. The tank is clean. I don't know if you want to get a shot in there. The fuel filter looks decent. If you were working on one of these, that's up to you if you want to change it. But considering that the tank is clean, there's not a lot of crap in there. A little bit. Not much. Looks like a little bit of grass in here. Alright. So let's... Uh, Let's take this apart. Let's take this side off first. And get a smaller screwdriver. Everything's probably just hard as a carp. that off there's some there's some crap there and that popped off of there and that's hard as a carp that's got to be nice and soft and pliable and that's hard as a carp there's our little needle valve Pull this side off. There's our little screen. That's a little screen in there if you don't know. And that screen is clean and clear. little bit of debris in there so we'll just rinse that off it's really not in bad shape at all I think we could just get away with a kit I 
and put that back together like that. All right. So to look up these kits, this is a Zama. Uh oh, money's here. All right, so money left and left me some money. So back to the carburetor. Now this is a Zama carburetor. Now they put different carburetors on these things, but this one happens to be a Zama, and this one is a C1Q. C, as in the letter C, one and Q, as in the letter Q. And then over here, it's hard to read, but it says S110. S is in Sam 110. So we're going to go to Zama's website and I'm going to find out what carburetor kit goes in this thing and I'm going to show you how I do it. So I'm on Zama's website. You go to support, go to parts and service, and you go to carburetor lookup. It'll bring you to this window. We have a C1Q. Click on that. And now we'll scroll down and we'll find S110. And there's S110. There's a 110A and a 110B and a 110C and a 110D. We got an S110. Must be purchased from an authorized still dealer. That's a bunch of malarkey. Click on it. And then it tells us if we want the gasket and diaphragm kit, GND, gasket and diaphragm, 55. Or if you want the whole rebuild kit, it's an RB97. So you can go on the inner screen and find it. Um, I was purchasing these from another distributor I deal with. And when I, go to, when I go to buy them now, it tells me I can't buy them from them. I have to get them from Stilch. Again, a bunch of malarkey. So then I go to Sten's website, and I punch in GND55, and then I can buy it from Sten's. So that other company's losing out. And I used to buy them from them. Not anymore. So I just so happen to have one of these. This is old stock that I had. Because you can tell it's got a date from... March 1st of 2017. So this was from that other company that I used to buy them from. So I must have bought a bunch of these and this is the last one I got. So there it is, GND 55. And Rotary has the air filter for it. And there's the part number from Rotary, 14085. And then I've got a bunch of those bulbs, let me find them, that I get from Zama. Here they are. I get bags, I buy these. They come in a pack of like, I think they come in a pack of 10. They call them a syringe. And there's the Zama number pack of 10. There it is up there crazy long number so I just need one of them and put the rest of these back all right we'll crack open this kit that's the price I charge Maybe you charge more, maybe you charge less. You're ripping people off. Yep, that's what I do. I just rip people off on a daily basis. Heaven forbid I make any money. So there's that. So you line it up. There's your gasket. There's your diaphragm. Gasket, diaphragm. There's our syringe. Throw that away, clean this up, this little plate, and again, whenever you're doing these little carburetors like this, 
Got to be real careful with the compressed air because there's all little tiny check valves and stuff. Like right there, there's a check valve in there. So you don't want to jam anything in that little hole because you'll ruin the carburetor. You can buy that part and replace it, but you have to get a, uh, a tool to pull that out and then you got to press the new one in. And let me get my dental tools. And also check these Welch plugs because they put sealer on these plugs and that sealer likes to come off over time. And that sealer will swirl around inside here and get into little nooks and crannies that you don't want it to and that'll keep it from running. Now very rarely do I replace the needle and all that stuff. I usually just do the gasket and diaphragm kit. If you want to buy the kit and replace the needle and all that stuff, that's up to you. But uh, I very rarely replace all that stuff. That stuff usually doesn't go bad. So we'll just spray this off with some carburetor spray. Uh oh. I'm going to use the Walbro carburetor spray on a Zama. I hope it doesn't ruin it. <laughs> so I'll spray it off. And then lightly with the shop air, kind of blow it off. Get it clean. And again. Don't want to blow too hard. You could wreck, blow that check valve out of there. And then you'll be wondering why it don't, why it don't work anymore. I know some people put them in ultrasonic cleaners. I, I don't do that. If it's that bad where you got to put it in an ultrasonic cleaner, you might as well just buy a, a new carburetor. Again, there's check valves in here too. This is another little check valve right there. So you want to be careful. Check that sealer on here, see if it's loose. You don't have to reseal it. If you want, you can. I've never had any problems after uh, I cleaned it off. It's not like it leaked or anything. And again, lightly blow it off. So we don't blow all the check valves out of there. All right, so here's our new diaphragm. With the gasket. This hole's got to line up with this hole here. That's going to go on there like that. Put our new syringe in there. All right, one side done. Now we'll go to this side. And here's our fuel pump side. Just to verify, we'll take a look at the gasket, make sure all the holes are in the right spot, which they are. Peel this gasket off. We got some crud under here. So we'll clean that off. 
So this thing probably just sat. Like a lot of equipment, it just sits somewhere and then somebody gets a bug up their keister and decides, you know what, I'm gonna clean out the shed or the garage and I don't want this head trimmer anymore or chainsaw or whatever it may be and they decide to just throw it away. And that's where the term one man's trash is another man's treasure. Pull that off. We got this spring and this little cap. And then we have another gasket and this rubber diaphragm I guess you would call it so as I could tell the gasket goes on top just like that kind of wipe this off a little bit and again some sealer see the sealer came off that was on that welch plug common happen to see it all the time a lot of times they'll bring something in and they'll say it ain't running good take it apart you usually find that sealer it come loose and was swirling around in there so there's that we got our little cap and a little spring back in there. And then there's those little little tits on there which go in those holes. Pretty simple stuff for me. Might be hard for you, but it's pretty simple for me. Just a matter of taking it apart and looking at it, that's all. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Get that locked in there. So now I'll get me some fuel line and we'll replace those short little pieces of fuel line. All right, it's back together. Let me see if I can scrounge up a gasket. So I got some different size fuel line from Rotary. Now this is for Echoes, but it'll work on the stilt. And they got it in two different sizes. And as you can tell, this is kind of a thin walled tubing. And this is kind of heavier, but the inside diameter looks about the same. And here's the part numbers. It comes in 25 feet. I get a dollar fifty a foot for it. That's this thinner, thinner walled stuff, the one three three six nine, and this is the heavier stuff, the one three three seven zero. So I'm going to go with the heavier stuff. So let me get some cotters. Candy, put down those cotters. Remember that video? Candy. Put down them cotters. Tandy, put them cotters down. Turn yourself in. Listen to her, Tandy. We don't want this to go any further than it already has. Cotters. So there's the short one. Get 
Don't you gotta buy stilts? Fuel line, it's a stilts. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot it's the space shuttle. Oh, I gotta get this stilts stuff. And there's the longer one in the back. Down there pretty tight, I don't think it's gonna come off. Alright, let me reinstall the carburetor. Now there's a little white crankcase hose on the bottom. Make sure you get it in there. Short holes went in the bottom, fitting on the carburetor. And the longer hose went on the top. Now I'll hook up the throttle, put the air box back on, and we'll throw some juice in it and see what happens. So I found a new gasket that went on the back of the air filter one, that one that was tore. I used the other one over on the back because it was fine, it wasn't tore. I give you a part number, but I don't have a part number because I got this tape case that's just full of carburetor mounting gaskets, so I just dug through there till I found one. That would work. I put that four mix fuel in there. Now, maybe you got a four mix and you and you use a different oil and it works for you, that's fine. If it works for you, hey, more power to you. So let's see if it'll prime up. Come on. I can hear it. Here we go. Come on, fuel. You can pump this thing as many times as you want. You're not going to hurt it or flood it. There we go. Now it's coming up there. Took a bunch of pumps. It finally pumped up. Now if you're pumping this thing and a bunch of gas comes shooting out of the throat of the carburetor, starts dripping out where the air filter goes, well then you ruin one of them check valves. So you might want to buy a new carburetor. All right, so let me put the choke on. And I got it latched on high. Now, Mr. Cameraman, you got to be careful because you're by that thing and I don't want you to get cut if that thing starts up and starts moving on you. So let's, let's hope this thing will fire up and run.
didn't even have to put a plug in it. It's got the limiter caps on here for the carburetor adjustments. So they'll only go so far and they were turned in. So I just opened them to the max and it seemed to run better. And you see how it ran a little different with the air cleaner in there? So a lot of times when you tune these carburetors, you gotta have the air cleaner in there because it's kind of re restricting the airflow so it may run different. So let me turn it back on, give it a yank. Look at that. How long did that take to fix? Got that carburetor kit, the purge bulb, and the air cleaner. And this baby's worth some money. I could, I could spray it off with my pressure scrubber, get it all cleaned up nice, make it look good. I don't know if this gas cap is leaking or not. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got a new gas cap. I'll put a new gas cap on it. And how is it? Is it sharp? I may touch it up too. Sharpen it up. How do you sharpen it, Carl? I like to sharpen mine. How do you sharpen it? You know what I sharpen mine with? A wizard wheel. And I'll show you real quick how to do it. So to sharpen this thing, you want to get it in a position like I got here. Because I'm going to start with this side first. So I just take my wizard wheel, and you just hold it at that angle. See how that angle is that they sharpened it? Just hold it at that angle. And just rub it on there and touch it and feel how sharp it is. See how I did that? Again, it's not the space shuttle. It's just a piece of lawn equipment. It's not that critical. So then you do all these first, then you can flip it over and do this side underneath, and then you'll have to start it up and get the, get the teeth to move to the other way, so then you can do the other side. And you can just sharpen this thing yourself. Now this one's pretty bad right here, it's pretty dull. So I'll have to take a little bit more off and then just feel it. You'll, you'll be able to feel it if it's sharp. And then you may want to oil it when you're done. Pretty simple. Don't make it any harder than it needs to be. Don't over technify things. I hate when people over technify stuff. That drives me crazy. It's all they're little. Technical knowledge. Just keep it simple. the wrong angle. That wouldn't cut butter. Well, I done run out of new caps, so I had to text my brother Farrell because he's a stilt stealer. Tell him I need another bag of these twist lock caps. But I did find a used one in my pile of parts over there. So let's see if this one's any good. Oh yeah, that one don't leak. The only difference is this one's got that little short thing on there and this one's got the long one. But that's no problem. I can just pop it out of this broken cap that just pops out. 
pop that one out and then I'll just pop that one in now I got the long thing now this thing this little ball thing there's a little spot in the tank that it latches into so you don't lose it there we go I don't know if you could see in there. See how it locks into there? Alright. Well, there you go. Garbage pick treasure here. Moves back and forth. Just got to clean it up. Heck, I'd probably get two $250 for this thing. For someone that needs it, all sharp and ready to go. I got it all sharpened now, and I cleaned it, and I lubricated it. And for these hedge trimmers, I like to use the fluid film. And the reason I use the fluid film is it doesn't have any solvents in it. It's uh, biodegradable, and it's non-toxic. So... It may not hurt the plant life, this type of lubricant. You could use other lubricants on it, but you know, it may kill the the plant when you're when you're trimming it. So I like to use the fluid film. And then another thing I did is it's got a port here for grease in it. See, it's got a little picture of a grease gun on there. So I took the bolt out. And I've got a needle greaser. It's just an attachment. You can make one of these. I've made these before out of a piece of um, tubing. I just took a real small, like one eighth piece of tubing and a fitting, a compression fitting and a coupling and I put a grease fitting on the end. I made my own needle greasers, but this is one you can store bought. And I just put some, um, some multi-purpose grease that I had in there. But you can buy the still trimmer grease they have. And then I went online on the inner screen and I found some alternatives for greasing these. Uh, one of them was white lithium they said they, you could use. Uh, Tacomic Green Star grease. Uh, Dollar B Green Lubricant grease. And they also said you can use that corn head grease in here. So we got that greased up. And then I went ahead and cleaned it, gave it a good, a good bath. Got it all cleaned up. And then finished it off with a tarot sticker. <laughs> There's me pointing at the rope saying, this is where you pull it, dummy. Um. So let's go out. I don't have any big hedges to, uh, to trim. Oh, let's go over this too, how this head works. In case you don't know. You pull this back and then you can rotate this. See how it's got a bunch of different positions in it? So like if you had to trim, like this. There's all kinds of positions on here. And then you can store it like this. This is a stored position. So yeah, they're pretty nice uh, little tool that somebody threw in the trash. So let's take it outside. I got some shrubs in front of the shop and we're just gonna trim a little bit with it. Not much, just a little. Oh yeah, one other thing. It's also got this on it. So you could put a harness on it to hold it. It's, it's pretty heavy. So like a weed eater, you can put a strap on there too.
see how it works on this. My sharpening job worked, it's pretty sharp. I've been doing it that way for many years with the wizard wheel. Works good, nice little tool. Somebody will be happy to get this. So subscribe to this YouTube channel. Taro fixes all. Oh, excuse me. I'm Taro, the dumpster diver. Follow me with your garbage fit lawnmower equipment on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store. We got all kinds of stuff for sale there. Check it out. Go to our other channel, Terrell Fixes All Skits. It's got all the funny skits. It cuts out all the technical part. So if you like the skits, check that out. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Ronnie here again, and not only is it a good idea to invest in precious metals, but it's also good to invest in CDs. And I'm not talking about certificates of deposit. I'm talking about compact discs, baby. These things are making a comeback. We could all use a little cash in our lives, or how about even some more money? Now that's a solid paycheck. Well, I don't have a Johnny Paycheck CD, but that's another good one to invest in. So give me a call today. Hey, Ronnie, have you seen my Chaka Khan CD? Oh yeah, yeah, it's right here. Now that's a good investment right there. She's priceless. Call today.